I'm going to attempt to try and get some really good shots with zero light in seascape photography. Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog, and today you join me, I'm on the Copper Coast. Then I'm back to a place that I visited, geez, October now at this stage, when I had the grouper guys over and I had Mr. Michael Shane Bloom to come to this very beach and explore it with me. But today I'm back now, it's the midway through December, and I haven't been out and taking photos in such a long time, but I couldn't wait any longer, I wanted to get out to try and get some shots. Anyway, now, as you can see here, the conditions are not ideal. There is a deep, dark clouds with tiny, 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 tiny gap on the horizon. I don't know, that might work, it may not work, but I'm in a very, very moody conditions at the moment. And even down here, when I look at this, this is something which is normally beneficial because I can get a nice shot with it, but there's nothing really for me to photograph on that. Now here, I have two options. I can go over to this direction here and I can shoot these sea stacks or I can continue on down this direction and I'll try and point at it here with my hand if I go there there's a sea stack hidden in the cliffs that you can't really see from here but it's a solitary sea stack it gives a very very interesting solitary subject so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to see can I get nice shots with zero light for seascape photography today let's go As I'm walking across here, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get so many nice shots. That little sliver that I mentioned earlier on the horizon is pretty much non-existent. And actually, now here's an interesting thing here for you. Behind me here, do you see this? This is stones that have been washed up from the ferocity of high tide. Now, I'm around three hours away from high tide, so I should be okay. But I'll give you a look around now because I'm just coming up to this stack and now is when it can become visible so here is that singular stack as i'm continuing along here and as i go further and over i can allow me to be able to fill the frame with that and nothing else in the shot it'll be a very moody shot but it'll be interesting and with the water as it comes in below me here i am going to be moved back but there's my subject hopefully it'll work out Gonna get the camera set up here now and then I'll check back in and tell you what my thoughts are for my first shot when that happens. So what I'd normally do is I wouldn't come along and put my tripod, as you might have seen on my channel before, I will go handheld. And by going handheld, it gives me an opportunity to be able to explore with different heights and different angles. Now, with this as a subject, you might think, well, it's only straight on there and what difference is it gonna make? Well, it can make a big difference because as I move over to the left or I move over to the right, I'll reveal different facets as well of this singular stack. And in actual fact, from here, it looks very, very thin, but from over here, it's a lot wider. So if I go to this direction, that will appear a lot wider as well in the frame. So it's really important that you play around with your different perspectives just to see what you can get and what's right for the scene. Now, as I'm rocking up here, I'm just gonna put in some manual settings here. I'm gonna to go to uh, F7. And I'm just going to have a quick look. And even that on its own here, um, my ISO actually is too high at the moment. One second, I put that down now to 100 and just to see. So at F6.3 here, um, for me to go handheld, I have to go 1 13th of a second. Now, I'll just take a shot and see. It's okay, but I can see that the gap that's there uh, on the horizon is showing on the back of the camera. Now also, I can see a mist that's coming in here, or as a fog that's coming in here. So I might end up getting lucky and getting completely moody images, but I'm gonna get the tripod now that I think I'm gonna take from here on, 
and then I'm going to look and see can I get something here from the front in the foreground. Now I've got rocks but I also as well have seaweed and I don't necessarily like to have seaweed in a shot. Number one because it doesn't look good but number two because it moves and when you've got movement within that you don't want to have any movement you only want to have the water as the movement and then the static element being here which is the stack and then a rock in front but I am going to be pushed back as the tide will come in so I'm going to stop talking for now I'm going to grab the first shot anyway in, and once I get that I'll talk you through what I have from there. So I have my first shot there now and it's okay it's kind of like a minimalist shot I'll give you a look here I'll spin you around and you can see uh, what I'm looking at here so there is the scene and now here is on the back of the camera and as you can see as the water is coming in here it is creating nothing but just one subject on the left hand corner right here I do have uh, a couple of stones which were in the image and whilst they're okay I would kind of prefer not to have them there and just have it totally minimalist so I might move around here and just get nothing else or I might go over here because I see a set of rocks that I'll only be able to shoot right now because with the tide coming in soon they're going to be covered but they should act as a nice bit of a foreground interest leading up to the stack so I'll give you a look at this first shot anyway here now we're going to go over then just to here and we're going to take a shot with these rocks and then see how they go next So for my last shot there I actually never said I put on my six stop filter and because I wanted to have as much smoothness as I possibly could within the shot now I've taken off the six stop and I'm just going for my preferred half a second and I'm actually at f11 at the moment ISO 100 and it's actually under exposed slightly but I'm doing that because when the water is coming in it's going to be extremely white within the frame but with the half a second it allow me to be able to capture the water as it comes in and also as it goes out and as these waves as you see here when they come in and then they meet in front of me and this rock has them flowing over it I think that will be a nice shot I'm focusing on the rock in front here and then everything else will be in focus within the shot but I'm just waiting for the right wave and there's some nice ones out that are coming in but I'm waiting for it to cover here in the front and that's something I think that is important and I've said it before but now I'll say it again is when you want to take shots like this set up your shot but wait for the water to fill in the gap so there's a gap in the sand below me here and what I want is the movement of the water and when at half a second I get some nice texture within that so this is the shots that we have here I'm going to then as well put back on my six stop and I'm going to try and get a longer exposure as the water will come in here and hopefully then it's all smooth below me and you just see the tops of those rocks that are just coming through the scene. I have to be careful with waves like these because they're going to come in and either soak me or soak the camera. But they're perfect because they're filling that gap. And also, by the way, wait for the water as it's going back out as well and you'll get some nice streaks of the water as it goes back out to sea. This beach is phenomenal for it. Like I would have showed you when we were coming in, that big sweeping bank of stones. Here, you get a nice undulation at an angle so the water as it comes up it will come up as far as me and then comes back down again and gives loads and loads of streaks that are going back down so yeah I gotta have a look at these here now I'm going to check the camera there as well because I do think that way splashed me and there's not a big one as well coming so yeah I'm gonna get out of here now <laughs> and avoid getting wet but look I'll give you a look at these shots anyway here let's see no I stayed dry that's amazing but here's these shots anyway and then I'll put on my six stop and I'll go for a longer exposure then after that.
Now, after my last shot there with that single solitary rock, I'm glad I did it because if you look at it uh, right now, I'll show you now, you can see it's pretty much covered by the incoming water, so it's difficult to be able to get a shot where it's kind of separated. But I've moved over now to another area here, which just below me, you have these rocks, and there's three of them that are leading out. And I've taken a number of different shots. Again, I've stuck at the half a second because by sticking at the half a second, it allows me then to be able to have different shapes within the water as it flows around. In fact, I'll give you a look here. Um, let me see if I can do this here. I'll give you a look uh, at some of the shots that I've taken here on the back of the camera. So hopefully you should be able to see that. And you'll see now as I'm taking the shots that the water as it's coming in, each one is a different image and you see the different shapes that are there as the water is creating all of those textures within the image. The frame hasn't changed, but the water has, and each wave is completely different. And that's why I love seascape photography, because you will get some pretty interesting shots, like this one here as the water will hit that rock. And then also as well, as it goes back out, it creates another outflow within the image. And then every so often, I think what you'd like to get is like this, where you get these that are actually um, crisscrossing over as well. Hopefully you're able to see all those there. I didn't lose them in the frame because I got absolutely soaked by one of the waves. But yeah, always be you know on the lookout, see what types of shots you can get and keep taking the shots because the water is what's going to create the image for you. So now I definitely need to go clean my camera because it's covered in salt. But yeah, I'll give you a look at these next now and then we'll see what else I can do. As I'm coming over here to the far side of the beach, first thing I actually want to show you is, look how much wider now the stack here is versus when I was first on my shot. So I've come over here to the left hand side here because I don't think I'm going to get any light and the light is fading fast now. I think I'm close to sunset. But nonetheless, it's exactly what I thought it was going to be, which was moody photography. But I want to come here because I want to utilize these rocks. And on the other side over here, if I take you this side, there's a gap in between these rocks and I think if I can get a shot here which I think would be nice with this and these rocks here and as the water is flowing over it now from a height point of view I don't want to go too low but I also want to have a bit of height so I think here is probably okay so let me just set this up here while I'm on the fly and see I may need to go uh, higher but we'll see and the reason I want to go from a height point of view number one is to protect the camera <laughs> from these waves but then number two is to show a bit more of the structure within those rocks and actually you know what I think here is perfectly fine so let me just see this now and I'll set this up and I'm going to kind of take the shot on the fly and I'm going to wait um, to see so I'm going to focus a third into the scene just need to brighten this up now so I can have a look actually you know what I'll do I'll take you over here uh, onto this camera now and then you can see what I'm looking at so as I'm here now, this is what I'm looking at. And if I move this around, so you see on the left-hand side here, now it's a bit of a 16.9, so it's slightly cropped from the video point of view. But I'm waiting for, just like that, for the water to flow in and then fill up the frame. Now I'm at 16 mil here, and I will have that within the shot, but I'm gonna wait for the water to flow in, and I'm also gonna wait for the water to flow out, just like a shot like this. So yeah, that's going to be my next shot anyway here. I'm going to play around with it, hopefully not get soaked, but yeah, I'll give you a look at this shot anyway next here, which I think will be very, very nice within this shape, but if I can get the nice flow of the water, but I have to be quick because the water is not waiting for me, so it is going to come in very quickly. So yeah, here's the next shot now, and I'll talk to you after that.
So now, after getting those shots there, I just noticed a couple of things that the half a second was okay, but I decided to bump it up to one second. And because the light is so low, I didn't need to have any filters. So I was able to get that shot without any filters at f10 and ISO then is at 100. So that to me, I think is going to be a nice shot because I went for a portrait already first and foremost with the water meandering out between the rocks. And then I just did a couple as well in um, landscape mode to be able to see more of the scene. But I think the portrait, portrait ones I actually prefer. I'll give you a look at them now, actually. Let me know in the comments which image do you prefer from that. Do you think the portrait works better or is it the landscape that works better? Now, I'm going to do a final set of shots here and I'm going to try and get a shot, like I would have mentioned earlier on here, about the water as it flows back out the beach. So I'm going to go back up pretty much to where I would have started from on this shoot today. And I'm going to come to the edge of the water line and then I'm going to wait for the water as it hits me then I'm going to take the shot as it flows back out and I think that will work really nice as well here because you get nice leading lines that will lead out towards the singular stack anyway so yeah here's these shots anyway we're going to go back up here now before all the light is gone and then I'll check back in there but let me know in the comments which image you prefer I'm just doing this shot now. I'll take you over here at me again in a moment. But what I wanted to do is just do a quick tech shot, test shot and wait for the water to reach me. And as it reaches me, I then take the shot. Now, I'm still at my one second from earlier and that's going to be nice because I'll get a nice flow of the water. I need a big wave like this one to come in and reach my feet, which is going to do right now. And then I push my tripod down and then take the shot as the water is retreating. And already that's nice. Okay, I'm going to go grab you there. I put you further away from the uh, waves because I didn't want you to topple over but I'm going to grab this here and then I'll come back to you and I'll tell you exactly and I'll show you exactly what I got then. Okay so you're over here now with me and I've got the stack here on this side of the frame but it's in center in my frame here but with the water as it comes in I'm waiting for it just to reach below me here and I will end up going back and back and back but probably not because the light is fading but as you can see here, when the water comes up and it reaches just the front of me, I take the shot as the water is going back out and then you get these lovely streaks of water then going straight out to the main subject, the star of the show, which is this stack. But I need to wait for a nice big wave to come into me here. And also, with the water as it's coming in, I don't like, like I said, that I've got seaweed. So the seaweed is going to be an issue for me. I've tried to avoid it, but of course, it keeps coming back in with the water. But settings at the moment, still at F10 at one second. I think that's working. I can do that because I've got no major light. Now wait like this, then take the shot, and then that water is streaking back out. Bit too much water in that one, so I'm gonna continue on with these here anyways. It is nice big wave, actually. Let's wait. Let's see if that reaches me. If that reaches me, it will come up by my feet here. The second one will push it over. Here we go. Perfect, and now take the shot take the shot and what you see with these rocks as well is that the water will kind of undulate over the rocks as well as it's going back out but yeah give me a quick look perfect so yes you can get shots even in bad conditions and I've said it before bad conditions do not exist in landscape photography and I think today has been another example of that the light is gone now it's just going to, going to get darker I might play around to see if I can get a couple of other shots maybe I'll find a different composition but I also might get a nicer wave like this one and I wait now 
and then it goes back up. So yeah, thank you very much as always for joining this episode. It's so good to be back out again in the landscape taking shots. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me. If it's your first time on the channel, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment. And if you want to watch another episode, I recommend this video here. And until the next time, schlange voll.